Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless, for those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins, upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes, we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way, but the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth, like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny when he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people? A grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response is, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into, into your, your hands, hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, Father into, into your, your hands, hands, I commend my spirit. my spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach a laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, Father into, into your, your hands, hands I commend my spirit. spirit. 
But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. Into your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, Father into, into your, your hands, hands I commend my, my spirit. spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you hope in the Lord. Father, Father into, into your hands, hands I commend my spirit. spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Glory, Glory and, and praise, praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Your blessing, Father. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden, into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and Pharisees and went there with the lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, whom are you looking for? They answered him. Jesus, the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup the, gave, the father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, 
went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around the charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him. If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm. And they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your laws. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he had said indicting, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? <clears throat> your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and a purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the gods saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to the law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back to the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? 
Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven into one piece from top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled, they said, that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my vestures they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there, whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies may not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other who was crucified with Jesus. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But well, one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened, so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage saying, they will look upon him 
whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along the spices according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was closed by the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. difficult and painful day definitely for our Lord but for us as well and I have people who ask why did the father do this to the son no one from this parish has asked me that yet but they ask and it's a hard question to understand we need to realize that God is justice and love and kindness and forgiveness and infinite in all of these areas and so it was necessary that Jesus came and sacrificed himself for us the reason being that we sin and a sin is a sin against God and sin against one another but also a sin against God and God is infinite and so when we do even a little, a little white lie, if lies come in colors, a little white lie, you think, yeah, it's just a little thing, is an infinite sized sin against God. And we are not infinite beings. We are finite beings with beginnings and ends in this world. And we cannot pay for an infinite size sin, not even the smallest one. And so we would be eternally damned. But Jesus, Son of the Father, and to be clear, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God himself, in his infinite love for us, wants to save us, wants to forgive us for our sins. But in his infinite justice, God cannot deny himself, nor would we want him to. His justice must be paid. And so, since we could not pay the price of our sins, the price of our crimes against ourselves, the world, and against God, we could not pay that infinite price. God himself came to pay the price for us. It needed to be paid because God is just. And so Jesus, the Son of God, God himself, was born into the world as a full human being, absolutely, completely, and entirely fully human, while still being absolutely, and completely, and entirely fully God. Two natures, human and divine, such so that the angels were astounded. And Jesus was born among us as a human being, lived with us, taught us about God, never sinned even slightly ever in his life no little little white lies or anything like that absolutely sinless but he was one of us jesus is fully human and one of us and as one of us and as an innocent and sinless one of us the innocent and sinless one of us he took all of our sins the people of his day, the people before him, and the people who came after, all humanity's sins upon himself and paid the price to God. He was tried in a legal way by the Romans. It was 
not a proper hearing and, and even Pilate said he's innocent, but he was tried and executed for the crimes. And God allowed him to suffer both physically and spiritually for all of our sins and to pay our debt because he is human, he can pay our debt, our debt. And because he is God, he can pay our debt on an infinite level. And so fully pays for our debt before God. And wipes our clean, wipes clean of us our sin for those of us who accept the forgiveness that Jesus has won for us in himself and the fact that he has wiped away our sins if we wish them to be wiped away we need to agree it's not just automatic we need to agree with Jesus and come to God through Jesus and God wipes away our sins and through Jesus we are sinless and the gates of heaven will open for us and God's kingdom will be ours, a kingdom of joy and love and peace and family and friends and fullness in God for all eternity. This is the gift that God pays for us. This is the sacrifice that the Son of God makes for us today on Good Friday. To pay our sins, there was, there is no other way every one of us has earned eternal damnation and Jesus has paid our price. Let us rejoice in God, Lord God, in his love, in his justice, but in his forgiveness and in his mercy. And the fact that he loves us so much that he willingly chooses to give himself for us. Never doubt that God loves you always on the individual level and on the, the global level. He loves us all. And let us live in God's love and sharing that infinite love, that love that God passes down through us. Let us share that with everyone else. And now, we bring our prayers to God himself. For the Holy Church, let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guide her and unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the Pope, let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed by their, you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For all orders and degrees of the faithful, let us pray also for our Bishop John, 
for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that a God and Lord may wa open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness for all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the unity of Christians, let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Jewish people, let us also pray for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty of a living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who do not believe in Christ, let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on their way of salvation. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those who do not believe in God, let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right and sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you, and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love, and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those in public office, let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, the freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in tribulation, let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, 
drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, ranting to travel is safety, the pilgrims return, health to sickness, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort our, a comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in the hour of need your mercy was at hand, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the sick, the dead, for those who feel lost or dismayed, let us pray, dearly beloved, for the swift end to the corona pandemic that inflicts the world, that our God and Father heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith. Almighty and merciful God, source of all life, health, and healing, look with compassion on our world, brought low by disease, Protect us in the midst of the grave challenges that assail us, and in your fatherly province grant recovery to the stricken, strength to those who care for them, and success to those working to eradicate this scourge. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, Come let, let us, us worship. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. This is the wood of the cross, on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the glory are, yours, are yours, now and forever. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home who are unable to receive Holy Communion but truly wish to, please join in our prayer of an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have all a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have been honored the death of your Son in the hope of the resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and re everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
and welcome to Our Lady of Lords Church in Massapequa Park, New York. And please join us in saying the Stations of the Cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. To you, Eternal Father, we now offer this tribute of our worship in a spirit of humility and with a contrite heart. May it redound to your honor and glory, and make us and all faithful Christians, both living and dead, deserving of the forgiveness of our sins, the increase of grace, and the reward of everlasting life. Let us glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in, in whom is salvation, salvation, life, life and, and resurrection. resurrection. Let us pray. O oh God, God, through the passion, death, death and resurrection of your Son, you showed us the path to eternal glory by the way of the cross. As we now follow him by our prayers to the place of Calvary, may we also share in his victory over sin and death. May we be received into his kingdom for all eternity, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. In the morning, the chief priests, elders, and scribes, and the whole council, binding Jesus, led him away and took him to Pilate. And they all condemned him, saying, He is guilty of death. We have found this man, saying that he is Christ the King. And Pilate, sitting in the place of judgment, handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. God spared not his only son, but Let delivered him up for all of us. Let us pray. O Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, you came down, down upon earth, earth from, from the glory of the Father in heaven and, and shed your precious blood for the remissions of our sins. We humbly pray that on the day of judgment you may find us worthy to be placed in your right hand and to hear your words. Come, you blessed of my Father, this we ask of you, now living and reigning forever. Amen. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Carrying his cross, Jesus went forth to the place called Calvary. Hail, O Christ, our King! You alone had pity on the following of Ali of our sins. Obedient to the will of the Father, you are led forth to be crucified, like an innocent lamb to the slaughter. To you be glory, to you be triumph and victory over sin and death. To you be the crown of highest honor and acclaim. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. For, For the, the wickedness, wickedness of his people he has stricken him. Let us pray. Lord, you once said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly of heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Grant that we may be able to carry it so as to obtain your grace. This we ask of you, now living, reigning forever. Amen. The third station. Jesus falls for the first time under the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ humbled himself to the point of death, even to death on the cross. That is why God exalted him above every creature and gave him the name that is above all other names. Come, let us adore and bow down in worship before God. Let us weep in the presence of the Lord who made us, for he is indeed the Lord our God. Surely he has borne our infirmities and, and he has carried our sorrows. Let us pray. Almighty God, God and Father, we, we confess, confess that we are weak, weak and, and that, that often we fail in the midst of trials and sufferings. Through the merits of the passion, and death, and resurrection of Christ, your only begotten Son, give us new courage and hope. This we ask in Jesus' name, who lives and reigns forever. Amen. 
The fourth station, Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. To what shall I compare you, or to what shall I liken you, virgin daughter of Jerusalem? For great as the sea is your distress, O Mother of Mercy, grant that we may always realize in ourselves the death of Jesus and share with him in his saving passion. A sword of sorrow has pierced your soul and has filled your heart with bitter pain. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, at the hour of your cruel death on the cross, a sword of sorrow pierced the grieving soul of the Virgin Mary, your mother. May she plead for clemency on our behalf, now and at the end of our death. Then we ask of you, living and reign forever. Amen. The fifth station. Simon of Cyrene is forced to take up the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your, your holy cross you have, you have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. As the soldiers were leading Jesus away on the road to Calvary, they laid hold of a certain Simon of Cyrene, a passerby, who was coming in from the country, and forced him to take up the cross of Jesus. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Whoever does not carry his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Let us pray. O God of grace and might, accept our prayers and sacrifices and be moved to our mercy on us. Strengthen us in our weakness so that our rebellious wills may yield to your divine will in all things. This we ask of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy cross you have, you have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. Lo, we have seen him, and there is no beauty in him, nor comeliness. He is despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, his face full of grief. He is worn out by suffering, like one in whose presence the people hide their faces. He is scorned and disdained. His appearance is that of one tortured beyond human endurance. And yet he is fairer than all the sons of men, and by his wounds we are healed. Turn not your face away from us, and withdraw not, not from, from your, your servants, servants in your anger. anger. Let us pray. O oh God, God, renew us according, according to your own image and likeness by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. Guide our footsteps in your path that we may truly experience the gift of your divine charity. This we ask through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The seventh station. Jesus falls for a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy, holy cross you have, you have redeemed, redeemed the world. They delivered me into the hands of the impious. They cast me out among the wicked, and they spared not my life. The powerful gathered together against me, and like giants they stood against me. Afflicted me with cruel wounds, they mocked me. But I am a worm and no man, the reproach of men and the outcast of people. Let us pray. O God, by the humiliation of your Son, who lifted up our fallen world, grant your faithful people abiding peace and joy. Deliver us from the perils of eternal death and guide us to eternal happiness in heaven. Through this we ask through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy cross you have, you have redeemed, redeemed the, world. the world. 
Following Jesus on the road to Calvary was a great multitude of people and of women who bewailed and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Remember that the days are coming when they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. If they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it's dry? They who sow in tears shall we enjoy. Let us pray. O God, you chose rather to have mercy than to be angry with those who put their hope in you. Grant us your grace that we may truly grieve and make amends for the evil we have done, and thus obtain the gift of your heavenly consolation. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Ninth Station Jesus Falls for a Third Time We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. My people, what have I done to you, or in what have I grieved you? Answer me. I brought you out of the land of Egypt, and you have led me to the gibbet of the cross. Forty years I fed you with manna in the desert, and you have beaten me with blows and scourges. What more should I have done for you that I have not done? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. He was was mute as a lamb before the shearers. Let us pray. Guard us, O God, on high, by your ever-present mercy and goodness. Without your help, we cannot overcome the evil that beckons us, because of our weak human nature. Without you, we shall surely fall. Help us to avoid all that is sinful, and guide our steps in the way of all that is profitable for our salvation. This we ask of you, Christ our Lord. Amen. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They came to the place that is called Golgotha, or Calvary, the place of the skull. There they gave him wine to drink, mingled with gall. He tasted it, but would not drink. They divided his garments among them by drawing lots. And thus fulfilled what the prophet had said, they divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. They gave me gall for my food, and in my my thirst thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. drink. Let us pray. Strip Strip us, Lord Jesus, of our former self, self, and with its evil deeds and ways, and and clothe us with the newness of nature, which you have created in justice, holiness, and truth, This we ask of you, now and living and reigning forever. Amen. Amen. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have have redeemed the world. Having arrived at the place called Calvary, they crucified him there and with him two thieves, one on the right and the other on the left, and Jesus in the midst. My people, what have I done to you? I exalted you with great power, and you have hanged me on the gibbet of the cross. They have pierced my hands and feet. They have have numbered numbered all my bones. bones. Let us pray. O God, by the sacred passion of your only begotten Son, and by the five wounds from which his blood was poured, you repair the evil wrought by sin in our human nature. As we on earth revere the wounds which he received, we pray that in heaven we may experience the fruit of his most precious blood. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. 
When Jesus saw his mother at the foot of the cross and standing near her, the disciple whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And that he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Having tasted the vinegar, Jesus said, It is finished. Then crying in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Christ for our sake became obedient unto death, even, even to, to death, death on, on the cross. cross. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, at the sixth hour you mounted the gibbet of the cross for the redemption of the world and shed your precious blood for the remission of our sins. We humbly beg that after our death we may enter with joy the gates of paradise. This we ask of you now living and reigning forever. Amen. The thirteenth station. The body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. All you who pass by the way, look and see if there be any sorrow like my sorrow. My eyes are spent with weeping, my whole being is troubled, and my strength is poured out upon the earth as I behold the cruel death of my son for the enemy has prevailed against him. Call me not Naomi, that is beautiful, but call me Mara, that is bitter, for the Almighty has afflicted me and has dealt quite bitterly with me. Tears are on her cheeks, and there, there is, is none, none to comfort her. Let us pray. At your passion, Lord Jesus, as Simeon had foretold, a sword of sorrow pierced the sweet soul of Mary, your glorious Virgin Mary. As we now fervently recall her bitter anguish and suffering, grant that we may obtain the blessed fruits of your redemption. This we ask of you, now living and reigning forever. Amen. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Joseph of Arimathea, who was also a disciple of Jesus, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and Pilate ordered it to be given to him. Having taken down the body from the cross, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of a rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb. You will not leave my soul in the netherworld, nor will you let your holy one see corruption. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you left us a record of your passion in the holy shroud, wherein Jesus, Joseph wrapped your whole sacred body when it was taken down from the cross. In your mercy, grant that through your death and burial we may experience the glory of your resurrection. This we ask of you, now living and reigning forever. Amen. Our concluding prayer, let us pray. O oh God, you willed that your only begotten Son should suffer and die on the cross for us in order to rescue us from the power of the enemy. As we now glory in honoring that same holy cross, grant that we may everywhere rejoice in your loving care and obtain the grace of rising with him. This we ask of you, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. By reciting this way of the cross, these stations of the cross, we are able to receive an indulgence from God, a remission of sins that we can keep for ourselves or pass on to those who have gone on before us. 
help to purify them on their way to heaven. And in order to receive the, this indulgence, we are to go to confession when you can, receive communion at your next opportunity, and also uh, say prayers for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, or the reigning Pope, in this case, Pope Francis. And so we say these prayers right now. We're going to say, One Our Father, One Hail Mary, and One Glory Be, for the benefit of Pope Francis. And so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and bless us in the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, and bless your family. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God uh, bless you, protect you, may his angels surround you and guide you. And may our Lord lift you up and bring you close to him now and always. Amen. Amen. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? Crucified my Lord